Now, we've got a special football show for you this evening. It is a Hunt Brothers takeover. We have Stephen, we have Noel. If you're watching, you can see them already. They're in separate rooms, separate places. If you're listening on the radio, then uh, sit back and enjoy. So, Noel, firstly, whereabouts are you in the world? I'm in Reading. Very good. I've been here, yeah, for the last 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, where are you? I'm in, oh, Four Oaks. Birmingham, but 10 miles outside Birmingham, so have been here for too long since my, well, my daughter started school, so once they start school, you go nowhere. And how is the self-isolating going? Going well. Uh, I'm a pretty active person. The wife is still alive, I can confirm I'm still alive, which is a good thing, so uh, I'm healthy, which is the most important thing. Yeah. No. What about you? Have you have you kids, Noel? Are you are you bedded down? Or are you on your own? Or what's the story with you? No, we've got two kids, two little girls. Uh, one's just turned four, and the other one is 18, 19 months. So it's active, let's just say that. Um, they're up early in the morning, which makes it longer. Yeah. But uh, no, it's been good. It's been good. It's just obviously you've got to keep yourself and the kids going. That's the that's the big thing, you know. We've we're lucky we've got a bit of space out out the front that we can run up and down and try to burn off some energy before they go down for naps. Um, the little one is down for a nap now, so that's why it's so quiet. Okay, good. We'll know when she wakes up, we'll hear her. Are you getting out for a run? <laughs> are, you, are you trying to keep fit? I am. I'm, I'm back in it like a... I probably knocked on the head for a job. year and a half. I just had, I knocked on the head for about a year and a half, but I got back in the last seven weeks, eight weeks. Like So, uh, yeah, I've been out for cycles and runs the last... Well, especially over the last six, six weeks bar... This last week, say I've been getting out just probably with the kids more than anything else. I'm um, trying to keep the distance. Stephen, you getting out for runs? Yes, I've been running until I pulled my calf three days ago. Uh, I got excited, went a bit further in the run, and had to walk about four kilometres home. So, <laughs> the wife, the wife as, as I come through the door. Uh, but I'm actually going on a bike this afternoon so and tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to it. Good man. It's good for the head. You have to get out when you can. For sure, and to be honest, I'd, I'd start going back doing a bit of running anyway before all this happened. So it's actually I live across the road from a park, so and it's huge. So it's nice to be able to to go there and run and, and do some nice bits and pieces. Uh, Laz, one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you is that it's kind of amazing. I was sending you on, on WhatsApp last night. It's kind of a long shot that anyone will go on and play for their country. So to have two lads do it from the same family is just uh, a bit ridiculous. So we thought we'd have a chat about all that. Noel, can you remember growing up? I, I, you're, you guys are from a very rural, kind of small village, Waterford. It was that kind of a, a childhood? Yeah, it was even probably 20, 20 odd miles outside Waterford that we grew up in as as toddlers, say, for all the world. Um, so, yeah, for me, it was a bit different. I didn't really didn't really play football and until I was made to by my older brother. Uh, if I had no, no choice. Um, but for him, I think it was a lot different. I think he always wanted to be a footballer, and that's, that's how it turned out for him, you know? What was your sport now? Uh, I played a bit of hurling, uh, but I didn't really play sports until I was eight, nine, ten. I didn't play. I didn't play football until I was twelve. You know, um, so I was more of a a country lad where I'd, I'd be walking the fields, I'd go fishing, I'd do, I'd just, you know, just be off on my own. I had a little dog, and that was me. I was happy. So I think for Stephen, his best friend was the football at the time, and yeah, it was that way ever since. And what changed your mind when you got to eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? <laughs> I don't know. Um, probably Stephen going to England was a big factor in, a, um, in, in me wanting to go to England. But I don't, I don't know what, how that came about, you know. But um, when I saw him off playing football every day, it looked better than school. Um, so, so that's what I tried to do, and you know, I, I think it took a lot of luck, a bit of hard work, a lot of luck to get there where I got to. Um, but yeah, that was what it was. So Stephen, when Noel was off uh, with the dog and doing a bit of fishing, you were with the football. Yeah, uh, I think for many times from the age of probably five or six, I literally lived, slept, football, hurling, golf was another one. Uh, anything I could do with a ball, then it was easier for me to do, to be honest with you. And I suppose when I look at it now, it's, it's pretty narrow-minded, and pretty foolish, but uh, looking back on it, you, as life goes on, you, you, you realise that well, it was meant to be, and you see what else life brings you as you go along as well. And Stephen, why, where did school feature in your priorities at that stage? Like, were you, were you good in school as well, uh, or was it not for you? Not probably. 
I, I probably lacked a bit of confidence in school at the morning, especially primary school, secondary school. It, it, it definitely wasn't for me in terms of being top of the class for sure. But uh, I think as you as you go on, I think I had plenty of common sense in terms of how I was, how I behaved as a, as a young child and was a good child, I suppose, in terms of never getting into trouble. Not like, well, no, it wasn't too bad either, but uh, definitely wasn't a bad child. Never got any fights in school or anything like that and kept me head down, believe it or not. What's the age gap again between you two now? About two and a half years. Okay. And are I look way time? better. <laughs> 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 look, it looks, Sorry, it looks about 10. It looks serious. about 10, to be honest. Ah, Which way? <laughs> Joe, he's, he's, been to Tur- he's been to Turkey, so no wonder he looks a bit, a bit younger, like. Well, listen, he's still, he still got, he's still got the, the dark hair, you know, he's, he's doing all right. Yeah. And, yeah. and were, there, were there other siblings, or was it just you two? We have a younger brother, um, when, with my mum and dad, obviously, we a younger brother, and then they, they parted, so they split up, um, and we've got another two. Um, I've got another brother and a sister in it from a, a different way. So it was uh, it was always entertaining growing up, you can say that. But um, at the start, it was just me, Stephen, and, and then James coming on a bit later. Okay. And what was the relationship like between you two, Stephen, growing up? Uh, I was the first child, so I was probably pretty spoiled as you go along in terms of being the older brother. Uh, I always was the older brother, I suppose, but no, to a certain degree in terms of trying to be the boss and trying to be the big boy. But it was it was more a case of, can I get Noel in goal so I can have shots when I was younger? It's, it's like all these videos now that are, are coming out with all the, the brothers and sisters playing in the back garden and having fun. It's like, no social, like having been isolated, you see all these kids out playing and you wonder why haven't they been out playing like that before? So mm. that's probably a positive to come out of it, that kids are getting out in the back garden now and they're playing just like we were. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, however long it is now, Jesus. Yeah, uh, the, the, the years are creeping by. No, I'm the eldest and I have two younger brothers and I, I, I think it was a similar case in our house as well. Youngest gets stuck in goals, whether he likes it or not. Yeah, that was it. It was a power thing, wasn't it? So uh, yeah. I wasn't going to win, but uh, yeah, that's what it was. And it is, he's so right. It is what you see now of you know, people out walking and people, you know, just spending time. That's what we used to do as kids because... We were isolated in our own way. We lived probably, our nearest neighbour was probably two miles, about a mile, right. two and a half mile from the nearest village as well. Um, so it was only us two that we had to play. So uh, it, that's the way it was. It, it does bring back memories, to be fair. Stephen, what age did you go to the UK at? Oh, I think it was about 17, 16, 17, I got my first trial. Uh, <clears throat> and then I literally had three, two or three trials at Crystal Palace didn't really, I well, didn't feature for Ireland underage until I was older, but literally 16, 17, moved to England when I was 17, signed two-year scholarship and off I went. I actually left probably, I did transition year in school, did about three, four months, I think maybe in two months in fifth year and then left, unfortunately. Not to finish my education, but it is what it is. And were you close to making the Irish underage teams? Were you on trial? Like, it's kind of amazing you, uh, you didn't feature. No, never. But that, that's probably, even if it, if you look at it closely now, my brother and I are pats in terms of what way you make it as a footballer. There's no right way about making it. Uh, you have your own journey you go on and you, you try and do your best as you go along. It wasn't meant to be that age. It's almost like I played hurling for Waterford. And then didn't play Harlem and senior for Warsaw because I left to go mm. abroad, if you know what I mean. So you, you, there's different ways of making it. No, am I right in saying that uh, you've been stuck in goal in the back garden meant that you were a goalkeeper then? Like, were you, I, I was yeah. reading, you were on trial as a goalkeeper, which is kind of insane. You were on trial with Palace as a 14, 15 year old as a goalkeeper. I, I think I was a little bit older, probably 16, yeah. Um, went over for, uh, for eight day, or seven or eight days. Um, oh, yeah, I'll never forget it. it was... It was incredible. But then the day, the day they told me that I was probably too small to be a goalkeeper, I wasn't good enough in a way, they tell you. Um, I remember I had to go then to, to Sellers Park because to, obviously I'd gone in with Stephen and stuff. So he was in the first team photo that day um, that they were doing for that season. Um, I think it really hit home there. I thought, oh, I'm not going to goal anymore. That's me done in goal. So um, it's it's so crazy how, how it changes and, and swings around because I think it's about probably 
12 years later, end up scoring the goal of Palace to draw them three all, um, to put us back back in the in the automatic spots um, in the championship. So it's it's crazy how things happen. Do you know what I mean? So am I right in saying when you're playing schoolboy football for your local team in Waterford, you're in goal. You you're, you've no experience really of playing outfield. Are you doing a bit of both? No, I was doing a bit of both. So um, when uh, in my own age group, I was playing right wing, um, and then in the age group above that, um, I was playing in goal. And probably the, the age group above that again. So if I was under 15, I'd be playing right wing. Under 16, I'd be in goal. Under we didn't have a 17, so under 18, I'd probably be in goal. Until then, the next year I changed, and that was it. Then um, it was just literally one training session um, where we had too many goalkeepers because we all trained together from 16s to the to the senior squad. You trained together, so obviously they had goalkeepers ahead of me in, in the um, in the pecking order. So I just went outfield um, against their senior players. And I, I just saw it as playing playing football with my friends because all my friends were playing and obviously had a good training session. Went to the game on the Sunday morning under, under 17, I think, or well, 16 at the time. Um, I wasn't in goal, so I thought I was dropped. I had the hump. I wasn't playing right wing, so I had the hump. And then when he said I was playing up front, everyone was looking at me kind of funny, but we ended up winning the game uh, against Ferrybank 4-1. I scored the four of them, so that was kind of it, really. Yeah, yeah that wow. was it. Did you and did you yeah. just take? Did you just take to playing up front? Did you just have a feel for it right from the off? Oh, listen, back then all we had was a football. So even when we moved from you know we moved from the from the country into the, into the city, so I ended up um, signing and playing with Johnville and stuff. And, and on my street, I had a lot of a lot of people who I who I grew up with and I'm my best friends still now. You know, um, who played for various teams around around the town. Um, and within within probably ten doors, I had three of my best friends that were living there um, and every every evening we were out playing football on the street that was the thing to do there was no there was no FIFA really there was no uh, yeah. there was no gaming going on so if you wanted a game of football it wasn't jumping on and, and seeing you online in 20 minutes it was you go outside you find your friends and you go play on a green um, and you know that was I think that was the best education I had in terms of football because I never got really coached if I'm being honest yeah Stephen is he a better uh, goalkeeper or a better striker? Well, ultimately, he's a better striker, but in fairness to him, he had a, a hell of a spring on him and he, and he made some good saves. Some days he used to frustrate me in goal for sure. And I used to look back on it and go, well, actually, he was half decent in goal and could have made it as a goalkeeper, but obviously, choose you choose your own path, no, as you say. No, no chance. No chance. I'm no. five foot nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, he, he was decent. At that age group, anyway, for sure, he was making saves. What height is Pepe yeah. Reina? Oh, it's not five foot nine. Is he? Is he? How is he bigger? Did you? Oh, did you say Pepe Reina? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, he I, was towering. He was. He was towering above me in the supermarket the other day because obviously I live in the in the Midlands. It was. It was about, it was about two weeks ago. Now. I think he went into isolation actually because he had symptoms. I think last week. So, uh, yeah, he, he's he's a lot taller than than that anyway. Is he? I, it's funny because I just have an image of him being small, but I guess compared to other keepers. But compared to normal people, he yeah. ain't small. No, yeah. I, I think you have that about people, though. I think even oh, I remember when we played uh, played Liverpool and we'd gone through the set pieces before the game, and I was marking. Uh, I was marking just for corners, and I thought, right, Spurs would be my height, blah blah. blah, blah. Before, you know, because I mean? I'd never seen him in the flesh, I'd never seen him in in real life. I've seen him on the television how he runs and stuff, and he looks small. And I, I'm in the lineup, and I'm looking for him, and I, I can't see him. I can see Gerard. The keeper, I can see Coutinho was quite small, um, and then a big one I just dismissed came across looking in line with me was Carragher. You no, know, went back down the line, I couldn't see him, so I went back through it again. And when I saw, I'm not too sure, I think it was Lucas who moved out of the way, and I saw him, and he was massive. And I thought, oh my god, and and Carragher caught me saying that, and he, he said, Have you got him for corners or something? I went, Yeah, and started laughing, like, but. It was just it shows how much you can be deceived by the yeah. television sometimes because he was he looks small but he's actually a monster. Is he? Who was that you said I just missed your name? You, you broke Suarez. Up. Sorry, oh, Suarez. Suarez is big, yeah. is he? Yeah. Jeez, yeah. I thought he'd be a little five foot ten tops. So did I. So did I, but he's definitely not. Right. Okay. Interesting. So, um, Stephen, mate, you're making your way and, and starting to do very well. And now you go up to Scotland and there's Dunfermline and there's Dundee. And then the move to Reading happens. So, Stephen, were you behind this? Were you an agent here working behind the scenes, getting on to Stevie Coppel saying, get my brother down here? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll bring you back a bit, Joe. You say oh, I was making my way, doing well. I literally had eight years of grafting my socks off to get anywhere near the Premier League. So by the time Noel then, when I did become an agent for Reading at the time, uh, I think Noel had come into training. I think we won't give him the full story, Noel, but Noel had a look around the training ground, shall we say, and, and liked the look of it. They liked the look of Noel. And uh, I think about three months later, I'm from right in saying Noel was signed on the back of him looking around the place and how it was. And he, Steve Copper liked his personality as well when he came in. So it was good. So, Noel, you give me the full story. Steve brought you around to <laughs> the training ground. No, I came, I came down for Stephen's. Um, we, we, had a, we, had a week, we had a week off. We'd been knocked out by, I think, with Celtic, our, our one, of the, one of the big two in, in Scotland in the Cup. And we had a free weekend. So, Stephen and Sagdu happened to be uh, the Saturday night after his game on the, on the Saturday. So I came down on the Tuesday, but then we went. We went to, on Graham Murphy's. Um, he had a testimonial golf day on the on the Wednesday. So he asked me to get involved. I got involved, and me being me, just jumped in with the gang and had a bit of crack and stuff. And then came in and watched train the next day. Um, and again, just had a bit of crack from the sideline and stuff. And you know, obviously they'd they'd been to watch me a few times. And um, after that, uh, I think they must have come and had. A, Kept an eye on me. Yeah, I scored. I remember scoring the cup final against Rangers, um, which is a which is a we, we got beat on penalties, but um, mm. it was just a sad weekend all around. So I ended up having to drive back after the game for my nanny's uh, my nanny's funeral. But uh, I know they had people at that game and a few others where I'd scored and done well. So yeah, probably Stephen was the main instigator in that one when I came down to to go look at to go free stag. So, Stephen, you're obviously delighted when he's moving down, I presume, to Reading. Like, this is just an amazing thing for both of you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think at the time, we'd been relegated. So, I was like, I suppose, in my own little world as well, wanting to manoeuvre myself into a position to get back in the Premier League. Uh, Reading at the time gave me a new deal to stay. So, I was committed for the season, at least, in terms of playing. But obviously, sidetracked. But obviously... Having Noel joined, then it made it easier to to stay, especially stay. But then, obviously, I've said it before, Joe. It's not easy playing with your brother in a team because, especially when you're when he's a striker and you're a winger, because you have a lot of other strikers as well. So at the time, it all was good fun and it's great to play with him. But it's, I, I I always found it difficult to to play with him sometimes on the basis of you have other strikers in the box too and who you cross it to and how you do it has an impact. No one might have his own version of it, but that year, I think maybe I set him up for seven or eight goals, so obviously I wasn't that bothered about it. Mm. And did any other strikers ever say to you here, Hunty, stop passing to your brother all the time? <laughs> well, I think Longy got the hump one day, well, I wasn't, but down in Southampton, actually. Longy, how do you fancy passing to me? I was like, I was going to say something there, but uh, I think all strikers, when they go through a patch when they don't score goals, get frustrated, so I just let it slide and you move on. And at the time, I think, Long he maybe moved after that. No one will have a no one has a better memory than me. Yeah. And Stephen, did you two have a good understanding on the pitch? Like was there an extra bit of layer of understanding maybe that might have been there with other people? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think especially on corners, listen, no one is is way better in the air than me and way better than most people in the air actually. So for him to to get across certain areas of the pitch, I always knew he'd be there to mm. score. I think maybe he scored three or four goals at least off corners that year just from making a certain movement and didn't have to be the perfect ball but I knew he'd be in that area where he'd score. Then open play, it's a different at the time we were we were free spirit and we were in the conference, so it was easy. How did you find open play with Stephen No, Quite often a striker when a you know a winger might be out on the, you know and, and you're trying to predict even just by body shape or familiarity where that ball's gonna go, what he's gonna do with the cross. Did you, did you find that easier with Stephen than most other players? Um, yeah, because I'd say, listen, I came into a very good team, um, a, t- a team that, that had re- players that were far better than I was. Um, so it was easier for me to come in and, and, and play with a, with a freedom because I, I knew that I was playing with really good players and that I just had to work, work my, my backside off for the team. I didn't care. I didn't care who scored. I never cared who scored, really. I just wanted us to win. Mm. Um, and that was always my kind of attitude in, in football I wasn't really goal hungry 
if that makes sense. Um, I just once we won, I didn't care who scored. Mm. Um, I still got the same enjoyment out of out of, a, out of a team scoring and me scoring. It, there was no different feeling for me. I just I just felt that it was a self a sense of like achievement for the team. So, yeah. um, I never looked into it that deep. I just I was just happy, I was just grateful to be there and to mm. play with these players. So, um, I think you can see that when I came into the team. I, I mean, listen, for me, you had Kevin Doyle. Who, who was the number one? We had Lee Royley, so we had Shane, um, who were all unbelievably good players and, and, and had unbelievably good talent. Um, and, and Stephen's right form is important for strikers. Um, and I was just lucky that that when I came in, that I mean, I was I didn't care. I was, I was going. I knew that no one really knew me in the championship, and no one knew about me, which gave me an edge that I could go, go win, say, ninety percent and ninety five percent of my headers. Um, and be a right pain and then nick chances off the back of that that's all i've done really i just wanted people to yeah. score and us to win and Stephen, we've spoken before and you've made the point sometimes that you often play better against bigger teams and better players you like that challenge it gets your juices going it gets you into it were you similar mindset that way no or were you maybe you know a bit more not overawed but like you could be uh yeah sometimes, sometimes you look at a level and you think geez can i step up to this next level you know yeah, absolutely. I, I probably found that I probably I mean Stephen was always a footballer, I always wanted to be a footballer, so he had an idea. I, I was more different. I was learning as I went along. Um and I probably found them harder the, the the lower I dropped, if that makes sense. Um, in terms of levels. So I I thought that I could probably drop down to I mean I had a had a couple of years of bad injuries and stuff and I dropped down to League One I thought, I thought right I'll be fine here I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get back up to the championship I'll, you know, I'll coast through it's not that way because for me there's players just as strong and just as quick if not quicker uh, if not stronger in League Two in League One yeah, every team has them you know mm. um, and it's how you deal with that mentally that's what, that's what I struggled with for the first probably four or five months until I got my head around that's where I was and how, how to accept it if that makes sense yeah um, did you, did so you... that way yeah, did you, did Stephen? Did you two live together at Reading in those years? No, uh, I had developed a girlfriend then. So you had developed uh, a girlfriend, okay? <laughs> developed a girlfriend. <laughs> I had a bit of trial, and, trial and error. <laughs> I had a bit of trial, see what I want, and then went back to to Ireland to to get one. So, but anyway, going back now, no, did you live with us for a while? No. No, oh, he, uh, he, rent, he, 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 he rented a uh, he rented me out an apartment of his very kindly <laughs> for, for for mates mates rates of a hundred percent. He actually that is Stephen. Actually, tell, I, Stephen, tell me that is not true. Oh, that could well be true. One hundred percent true. <laughs> you miser. <laughs> but having said that, I did I did live with Noel at Ipswich for a while because yeah. both of us played at Ipswich again down the line, and that I found easier. So yeah. Tide was torn, he lived with me. How much did it cost him? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So we've, yeah. established, we've established who the more generous brother is. That's important. Or more sure oh, yeah. one of the two. No, no, yeah. all good. Uh, we, so, yeah. so if we get on to Ireland then. So, you know, um, I think your debut, you know, was against Poland in 08. Yeah. yeah. And Stephen, you were in the same game. I think you came on a minute or two after him in that game. Uh, actually, come on together. Uh, wow! Same time, I think Trap was was bright and intelligent, and know it was Noel's first game. It was always a case of, as I said to you before, I always knew about Trap when I was playing or when I was coming on. So uh, to then have the two of us coming on together was obviously a special occasion. Very privileged to, to be able to do that. I think for Noel's debut as well, without taking Noel's line right away, I think it was nice to come on together. Wow, I, I had forgotten that. That's an amazing moment now. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, yeah, I couldn't believe it. It was. I, I didn't see it coming, to be honest. I was, I was just hoping to get on the field. Um, so when when he, when the boat was stripped off, I wasn't actually even paying attention until I stood up and he was. We were walking out together, you know. So it was a a, a bit of goosebumps um, feeling. Well, obviously a very proud moment for, my, for myself. Yeah. Was that in Dublin or in Poland? Dublin. Well, it was, might as well have been in Poland or in Dublin because, well, in Poland because there was loads of Polish there that night and yeah. it probably did feel like the only game in our lifetime that felt like an away game was was that night. Yeah. I think Polish had 
a fair few fans there. Uh, were your family there? Were they in the crowd? What I know, yeah, yes. they were there. I can't remember, yeah. yeah, no, yeah, they were. Yeah, right my uh, my my wife was up. She came over. I, I, was, I don't know if she was a girl or her fiance at the time, but she came over. Um, my mum and dad and that were there, so it was it was lovely. It was nice, yeah. and uh, Stephen got Stephen got his first goal in the game as well. Um, for I remember him days. looking at me to say if he wanted to take the penalty. Actually, it was it was because Robbie was off the pitch. Yeah, and we'd never really had a pen unless Robbie was Robbie would obviously be taking them. So we literally looked at each other and don't even look at me. And then yeah. to, to turn the wheel, he tried to take it off me at the time and I, I wasn't having it. But Wheeler is a good pen taker, to be fair. Yeah. Jeez, that's amazing. I'd forgotten you came on together. Do you know, there, there's a bit of cleverness and trap doing that, Stephen, isn't there? Like, that's a, that's a nice touch. Yeah, it's a nice touch. Uh, for sure, as you go along, who, how many brothers have played for Ireland? Not many, obviously. And mm. uh, to come on together then with Noel's debut. And I always loved coming on anyway in Ireland as so no matter what I always used to to try and get up to speed straight away and obviously having Noel on the pitch it was a difficult game actually Poland were played very well that night so yeah. it wasn't easy but obviously a good good chance. And uh, Noel was Stephen always giving you advice like is that how the relationship worked when you're a professional footballer were you picking his brain all the time or did it get to a point where that wasn't really needed and he was just almost a, a fellow pro? No, I, I probably asked him a couple of questions, but he probably more reassured me than anything. Um, he more he me out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. giving out to me about something I didn't do or something I did do that I shouldn't have done. Um, I've got, I, I was scrolling through photos. Actually, I, I, don't, I don't have any, I was just thinking I have no memorabilia up at all of, of any time I played. Um, cause I still see myself in the game. I'm wanting to get more, if that makes sense. So, yeah. um, Someone asked, I got tagged in something in Twitter uh, the other day and, and I had to go find a photo and I haven't got any. So I'm, obviously I'm searching the internet for photos and there's a couple of good ones where I can remember there's one where I'm, I don't know who we played against, but I said, I, I said to Stephen, just give me the ball, I'm going to smash him now. And he was like, no, can't. It was a, we had a free kick, but I think I got leathered before it happened like, and I was fuming. So he had his hands out telling me to calm down. But I was like, well, watch, watch me calm down. I'm going to go and flat <laughs> It was always more of a he was trying to keep me cool and um, keep keep me probably quieter than what I wanted to be. I know uh, Stephen was a huge fan of Trap Noel. How did you find him? Yeah, I, listen, I loved him. Um, he, he was he was a man. I've never seen that kind of energy from from. I know I don't want to disrespect him, but an older person. Um, you know, we'd be warming up and he'd be flying through the ladders beside you mm. and stuff like this. And it was amazing. And when he spoke, he spoke with such passion and such. You know, he, it was almost like a, an aggressive passion that he, you know, to to make sure that his his point was understood. Um, something that I kind of carried with me because he, he's talking to to people like Bobby Keane and, and Damien Duff and um, you know, the likes of these people, Richie Richie Dunn, who had done all the all the things in the game that you know they wanted to do probably. Um, and he's still like, trying to explain to to de- to to Richard Dunn how to get tight from a corner and really mark. You know this kind of stuff, and I the thought, details, wow, the details, yeah, the details, yeah, the details that that the basics that you need to do well to mm. be successful. And I think he done that really well. You know, I think under 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 his his reign, I think we we're really successful. We're going to take a short break, <laughs> and we're going to be back. <laughs> we'll be back with uh, Stephen and Noel Hunt in just uh, one second. Now we're back with the Hunt brothers, Stephen and Noel, for part two. So we were just talking Trap Tony there, and uh, you mentioned the details, Noel, which is interesting. Like even Trap showing Richard Dunn, who's a brilliant player, how to get his body position right or what he wanted from players. Did he give you much in the way of what he wanted from you? I know, I know, you didn't play hundreds of times for him, but was he able? Did you did you have a good sense of what Trap wanted from you? Yeah, it, pretty much. You knew everything you needed to do on the pitch because uh, if. If he didn't tell you, Marco would tell you, and and Lee Brady was there. They'd talk you through it as well, like so. Yeah. And um, between between the three of them, they, you know, they had it pretty much nailed down. I thought. Stephen was Lee Brady a big loss when he went. Uh, I think Lee was was good at observing the mood and seeing what it was. He didn't do much coaching. Lee. I think Lee was just there for eyes and ears to track to make sure everybody was was in line. Of course, when he give you tips on how to play and what to do you listen because you obviously one he was so talented and two he had the experience 
of Arsenal, that many years of coaching young players and developing them and, and going from there. But I think Liam was definitely more eyes and ears for Trap and Trap had his way of, of getting points across. And what did Trap do for you, Stephen? Well, I think you always get a feel for a manager, Joe, straight away. Pretty much week one, week two, you, okay, I'm going to be in this guy's bands. He likes me what, for what I do, you get a feel. And I think he trusted me, whether it was from the bench or whether it was the start games, pretty much from the first week he had me. So uh, I think he, I think once he, I say that, once he got me in line with his way of playing, then he was happy that he knew I'd be disciplined enough to do it for him and be clever enough, I suppose, to know what the manager wanted to enable myself to get more caps for Ireland and, and play for Ireland. I guess uh, the highlight for both of you as, as brothers playing for Ireland is in Barry in April, 11 years ago now. So 2009, it's, it's, it's kind of scary to think 11 years ago. So uh, if Noel, if you have the better memory, according to uh, Stephen, give us some memories from that night. Did you feel you were going to be involved? This is obviously against the world champions. It's a huge game. Um, obviously, I felt that I was going to be involved because we had, obviously, I was on the bench and stuff. Um, but just how the game panned out, um, I felt that he would go with, with, with more strikers on the pitch because uh, they had a man sent off and it was an opportunity for us to go and score a goal. Um, I think Steve Mann played unbelievable that night, if I remember that right. Uh, he had one of his best games for him. Yeah. Um, but then, warming up, I thought, yeah, I've got, I've got a chance of coming on here. Um, so, when I did get the chance, I was, I was buzzing, you know. Mm. Stephen, that was one of your best games for Ireland, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, one, one for sure. Uh, the occasion where it was, the size of the stadium, the atmosphere was in the place. And I mean, that and concussion myself, <laughs> and it all combined in a. He doesn't in a, in a remember it. He doesn't uh, remember it. No, it's crazy. It, it, literally, I come in, I remember half time coming in at half time going, well done, lads, we're doing well. But I think we were. We were one 0 down, or was one. I don't know what. Even my memory is still rubbish. But it was. It was one literally nil. one 0 down, and I didn't know what was nil nil at the time. So, uh, so you got it. You got a bang in the head. Did you? I got a bang in the head from I think it was Pirlo three kick after about twelve minutes. The ball hitting the back of my head, and and literally just playing the game from there on in, just on the edge of obviously do playing well and not even knowing I was playing well. I did know, but so, I didn't know the score at half time. Go away. So your best game for Ireland, uh, you were running around concussed. One of my best games, Joe, yes. One of your best games. Uh, one of your much. best games. One of your best yes. games. Yeah. So I'm you're on you're on you're on, on, you're, on, you're, on, you're on autopilot then. What does that tell you? That's the way to play the game. Well the way <laughs> play with no fear, for sure. And mm. play relaxed. And um, listen, I remember taking on players and going past players. Listen, whenever it was against Italy, I always played well against Italy. So my level of intensity so much to the, to the fact that obviously Buffon in our last game asked me for his shirt so I can't have, I can't have done that bad against Italy if, if he's asking me for my shirt so I remember him coming I said this before coming in in Liège asking asking me for my shirt and I thought Marco and Trap were taking the mickey so you know, I said being serious so I swapped shirts yeah so, so, so anyway oh, going back to Barry was, no was, hang on a sec sorry I thought you meant that uh, Pirlo might have been just standing next to you and you know oh we better swap shirts he came, he got word into the dressing room afterwards was it? Yeah not Buffon Buffon not Pirlo Buffon come yeah, in Yeah Buffon I know yeah and, and asked for my shirt so the boys thought that he was taking the mickey and so did I to be honest with you but no so we ended up swapping shirts and, and going from there and yeah. seeing the boys who were at the airport as we jetted off in a private jet so listen it's it's a little story. It's he hasn't even made the Hall of Fame on, on my on my games room in Ireland, but it's good. Jeez, you and Buffon, that's a nice one, isn't it? Yeah, well, well listen, it's it's one for sure that everybody will remember Buffon. Not too sure everybody will remember Stephen Hunt, but in so terms you, of you and your house have the Buffon jersey up on the wall somewhere. Is it is the Hunt jersey up in Buffon's house? I don't know. We'll have to ask that, <laughs> ask him in Italian. But listen, it, it is. Is the story whether he, whether he still has my jersey or not as an but uh, for sure it was it was a nice memory to have. Oh, yeah, no, amazing. So uh, back to the goal, Noel. Your goal. We're calling it your goal. <laughs> um, what, what a moment! 
Uh, can you describe that or, or even your memory or where in the, we'll see where Stephen was on the pitch? But like that has to be kind of the biggest rush you must have ever had. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I, I just remember the ball being played long. Um, I remember Caleb Foley flicking it on. I just, I just thought, oh, I've got the flight of this. And when, when it dropped, obviously there was, there was, I just, I just pulled on it, you know, and thankfully, obviously, whatever happened after it happened, like, but from me, I don't see it any other way. I know I scored the goal, so I was, I was happy. I was, I was buzzing. Obviously, the best. I mean, I spoke this morning about a game we played, and that was one of my best. I think that was the best, best feeling I ever had. Um, just to run off after that and run, you know, I was even running after Robbie. I was just so <laughs> over the moon, like it was, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Yeah, where were you for that, Stephen? Were you near? I was near. Uh, I was involved in the celebrations. I just think we, on the night, we deserve. Obviously, looking back in the game and having played the game, how much we dominated. Yeah, we deserved a goal, and we should have won the game on the night. Actually, uh, the, listen, the moment was it, to this day. You can see no one touched the ball. You can also see Robbie touched the ball. So uh, some of it touched the ball. It's, it's a difficult one because mm. even at the time, I said to Noah, I said, just be careful how we go about it, what you do and what you say. From Noel's point of view, for him to score the goal, for him and for the team, was, was a magical moment. And that won't be taken away for sure. Mm. But obviously afterwards, you think, OK, what way to manage it, how to do it. And oh, listen, to this day, I still think it could be dealt better from the head of the, of the FBI at the time and, and people within the, within the camp <clears> for sure. So I'm not, I'm not, I, my memory's a bit hazy on that. In what way did it become messy? Well, I... I Go on, no, it became it became messy because I obviously came out after the game and the boys were speaking about it. I remember being in the shower and we we're going through it um, after the game. I was, I was, and John O'Shea we were talking and he was he was buzzing, uh, and he, it was it was just sure to like because obviously he's a waterman. I was I was a waterman, so I came out thinking none the words of doing the interviews and I was saying I scored and then I was told that Robbie came out and said he'd scored. I thought, right, well, hang on. Now. So it I kind of caught me on the hop, you know, that kind of way. Um, and then I was in a bit of, probably a little bit of shock over the next day, I'd say, of what happened. And um, that's when Stephen was right. Stephen was, came and spoke and said, listen, be careful about how you do it. Because obviously it could cause friction in the camp. It could yeah. cause, it could be the end of my international career. Um, so I took that on board. I think probably probably from, from my point of view, probably a bit too much. Um, I remember I getting a phone call from the FBI on, the, the, the day after, probably, you know, this is a tough one. But obviously, if you go, if you go out and st start making a ruckus of this, and might jeopardise your international career. I, I remember losing the head with him, and I thought, oh, "What are you doing?" I remember just saying, "You know, have you ever scored for your country?" And he was like, "No." So I said, "So, don't talk to me. You've got no idea what I'm feeling right now." He goes, "So, how can you dare try explain it to me or try justify what you're trying to say to me?" And then that was it. Like, so I thought, right, do I just leave it go? With the off chance, and say right, I'll score again for Ireland. I get, I get another chance and I'll score. Um, and that's the way I went. That when I probably shouldn't have, I probably just should have stood my ground and came out and said, no, this is wrong. I was, you know, I felt a bit hard done by. I still, I still did. I still, I was, I was very bitter towards, towards it all up to about probably three or four years ago. Um, I remember going to see someone. I, I, at the time, I had somebody that I spoke to about my football. Uh, a football like psychiatrist, a psychologist, whatever you want to call it at the time. Um, and I spoke, I spoke to her about it in great depth because it, it frustrated me that much that it could happen and I, I couldn't let it go. Um, and I was, I was more angry at myself for leaving it go mm. um, and letting these people dictate to me what, what I knew was wrong. Um, but look, it is what it is. I, I, by the way, I don't know, I had nothing against Robbie. I, I, you know, I, I think. He's still a hero of mine. I had nothing against him in all this at, at all. Um, it was just the fact that these people were afraid to go and upset the apple cart because because it was him, whereas maybe if it was someone else, it, they, they would have gone to a, probably a, a goals thing. And, and, and sorry, I just felt that I, was, I wasn't important enough to, mm. to, be, to be dealt with, if that makes sense. And then I got an injury that kept me out for nearly a year. Um, and that, was, that kind of killed my international story, which was, which was gotten from me, you know what I mean? I understand why you reacted the way you did, though, and I understand why Stephen gave you that advice because you don't want to create a ruckus with maybe the team's 
dominant personality and chief goal scorer. Uh, that doesn't mean it's right, though. I can see why you're frustrated if you yeah. believe the goal is yours. I can see why, you know, for, for Robbie, and I, I appreciate you're saying there's no animosity towards him. For Robbie, it's just another goal. A, a good one in the mm. league against Italy, but it's just yeah. another goal. Whereas for you, in, in a sense, it's like career-defining, highlight of your, of your career kind of thing. It's a massive deal. I think, sorry, Joe, yeah. sorry, no, I think from, from that point of view as well, uh, Robbie's a striker. He scored that many goals because he's a greedy bugger in front of goal. Mm. There's no doubt, and that's what good strikers are. Yeah. But I think from a point of view where you come and say, right, OK, it doesn't make a difference who scores the goal from the captain at the time, and that would have would have put Robbie, in my opinion, in a better light in terms of right, coming out and saying this, this and this, but at the same time, he, he, he's got what he's got because of the way he is in front of the goal and I know he'll be the first to agree he's played with strikers that are pure no he's not a out and out goal scorer he's more of a team striker mm. Kevin Doyle Shane Long to a certain degree all them types that play that way do sacrifice some bit for the other centre forward and I think for them to score goals because one they know how to score goals two they're born to do it and three, they'll, do, they'll kill their own mother if they have to, to score a yeah. goal. So it was very difficult at the time. Uh, the whole situation was not ideal. It's still probably not ideal to this day in terms of what it is, but that's just the way it is and what it is, I suppose, now. Yeah. No, look, you don't do what Robbie did in his career without being ruthless and always wanting the next goal and that, that's the nature of the beast. So was it, it, was it on the night it was yours, Noel, and then it was changed officially that the, the FAI decided it was changed or is that the official signing <laughs> of the goal? I haven't well, even looked. I don't know yeah. what it actually says in the record book. Uh, do you know what? I don't even know because yeah. I, I didn't want to, I never wanted to look back on it because I was bitter towards it. Again, not, not, not bitter towards Robbie because, I mean, I, I remember in the 2002 um, World Cup, I had a keen jersey. I was playing for Shamrock Rovers. I was living in Tala in Dublin, like, um, and, and I'm up at, at six, seven in the morning to watch the games with your friends. So I never, ever once looked at Robbie in a different way over this. It wasn't, it wasn't Robbie that you know. If he thinks he scored, he did. Uh, I, I know I scored, so I hit the ball. <laughs> you know, that, that yeah, was the way yeah. it was. But, but again, um. It was just the way it was dealt with. That was that's what really that's what really hurt me. Like, and it probably affect me for a long term after that in terms of how, what I, what I taught people thought of me for trying to claim a goal. Right. Um, because I, I didn't care who scored, but I'm also a person of if it's right, if you're right, if you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, and that's the way I see things. I don't side with people because I think they're right. If they are right, they're right. If they're wrong, they're wrong. If they're not, I won't say. I would yeah. I wouldn't jump in and just give my opinion on. Something I didn't know anything about, like so. Um, but you didn't like I that perception. You, you, you didn't like that perception of you potentially afterwards. You didn't want people thinking that I'm some greedy little upstart here taking what's not mine. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much that. Like, and and that's not what I was. That's not why I played football. I played football to win games. Yeah, but by all, but by any way necessary, you know, within the game. Um, but. You know, and I do believe, like, if you want to be the best team, and I tell my players this at the moment, if you want to be the best team in the league, you've got to be the best at, at scoring goals, making, you know, creating chances. And then you got to be the best at playing the ref. You've got to be the best at being nasty. Yeah. You've got to be the best at all these things, the dark arts, as well as being the best at looking good, the best at, you know, playing nice football. You've got to be, be uh, the best at playing scruffy and winning. You yeah. know, these these little things all accumulate to, to why good teams win, you know? You don't see City out every week, you know, playing. I mean, don't get wrong, them and Liverpool set the standards so, so high, but go before them, maybe to United. United didn't always play well sure. and win. You know, when they went through that rain with Fergie, they, they were big, they were mean, they were, you know, they were ugly sometimes, but they got the results. That's that's what it was. So for me, that's what I am. I, I, I'll do everything I can within the game to win. And I'm honest, you know, I am honest. And I, I probably became more honest the more I went down on football, if that makes sense. And it doesn't matter if I fought, if I fought for a ball and I shelled it out, I, I put my hand up, but I wouldn't really claim for the, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wasn't, I knew in, in my heart that it wasn't their ball, so I just been it off, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, I guess we'll move off it because um, ultimately uh, I, I wouldn't even know who's in the record book. I, and most Irish people wouldn't, but it's a very memorable goal. And I remember your foot being there, his foot being there, 
you know, so that's what most people will remember. Although I can see how the FAI phone call peeved you, you know, look, you're the little man, yeah. he's the big man. I, I, I can yeah. totally get that. Um, to yeah. round things off, you both end up again playing at the same club, at Ipswich, under Mick McCarthy. Is, there, is this a good time for you, Stephen? Are you a little bit more relaxed about, you know, being accused of favouritism towards your brother? Do you know what? Actually, it was. It was more of an enjoyable playing with him at Ipswich, for sure. Uh, first of all, the teams up near the playoffs where we probably weren't expected to be up near the playoffs at the time. So, I think Noah come in, maybe made his debut against Charlton. Am I right in saying that, no? Yeah, and November, scored, yeah. Maybe went, come on and scored, which I think the touchy literally split your head open as well and shocked he was always getting yeah, probably knows. Head, so Andre BK and you can see it from here uh, <laughs> so but no it was definitely more enjoyable then it was more relaxed but again I'm more mature as a person as you go along in your career you realise okay this this and this uh, just go and enjoy it and to get to play with him twice three times actually international and two clubs and championship it was nice yeah, what was your experience at Ipswich now? I listen, it was it was totally different for me. It was a release. Um, I you, oh, you did, you did probably, a tough time at Leeds, hadn't you? Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a tower at Leeds. Uh, <laughs> uh, I had a bad injury in my first game, my first league game. I had a bad injury that that we that I tried to play through for probably uh, six weeks, eight eight weeks, um, and I ended up going for a scan and ended up having a double fracture on my back. Um, so that kept me out for probably a good part of six months mm. um, after that. So by that time, the new owner had come in in the January, sacked the manager, rehired him the next day, all this kind of stuff. And then kind of had a reason, wanted a reason to get rid of him after that. So I was Broy's first signing at Leeds. Um, and that kind of came out on me as well. Bear in mind, listen, I didn't deserve to be playing at the time. Um, I had a tower and I, I, I just couldn't put one foot right uh, in front of the other so it was one of them ones but then I started off the pre-season really well um, we're scoring goals and come to the first game of the season I wasn't in the squad again and, and that, it kind of picked up from the last season so to get out I had to go and, and pretty much beg the beg the owner to leave me out on loan uh, which he then agreed to because I wanted to play that's all I wanted to do it, didn't, it wasn't about again football wasn't about money for me it was about the uh, about just playing um, and yeah to go to Ipswich with Mick McCarthy and, and TC I was so grateful you know mm. so grateful to, to the man himself for taking a chance on me as well you know because um, I hadn't played for the last year and a half and I, I hadn't kicked the ball really so for him to do that where he was sitting quite high in the league I'm pretty sure that charting game put us into, into the automatic spot um, into, into the second position I'm pretty sure that did our third, you know, so was, we were right up there. And it was a 95th minute winner mm. in, in my debut. Um, and the extra time was for, so I was off with, with my nose. <laughs> uh, one of our ex players ended up jumping in and, and probably just breaking my nose a little bit. Um, so I had to get, get patched up, get the, get the, uh, the blood shirt on and, and get back out there. Yeah. I guess uh, I, everyone who plays for Mick seems to find it enjoyable in the main, so I can see how it was a good time. Um, so to, to kind of round off the chat, that's a hell of a jersey from the back garden in Waterford to the careers you've had in the UK and, and playing for Ireland and everything. That's um, just must be kind of amazing for the family, I suppose, Noel, to kind of finish things up because it's a, a, a trillion to one shot that it's going to happen that way for two brothers. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, you go home. We don't go home that often. I think Stephen is the same. I don't go home that often. Obviously, cause I'm working over here in the UK still. So, um, mm. but when you go home, there's, there's there's jerseys and there's there's pictures up and stuff. So, then I can imagine they're quite proud. Um, and uh, it's nice. It is. It's it's nice. It's special to have. Very very lucky. I feel very very blessed to, to have the career I've had. Um, but obviously now I'm in the other side of it. Uh, so so it's it's a different side to the game. Um, mm. but but again the hunger to win things is just that's what I want to do I want to, I want to win something you know and, and be a coach and, uh, and and do it that way just watch out for agents and you'll be fine <laughs> yeah oh, don't worry he's going to help me anyway <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't it taken the tail off me yet it takes two to tango it, it, oh, it won't go there <laughs> 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 The player, the players, he brings it. There aren't too much money. 
Oh, we're yeah. in League Two. The, the agent's taking too big a cut as well. It's a mess. <laughs> Won't be happening on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, fellas, uh, thanks a million for doing that. It was great to catch you up and, and, and uh, have that kind of a chat with you. So uh, stay safe, take it easy, and hopefully all this passes very soon and we're back to business as oh, usual. So, God. yeah, no, thanks a million. Yeah, sure. Appreciate it, man. Stephen Hunt, thanks, as sure, ever. Man. Pleasure. Thanks, lads. Thank you, Joe. Cheers, Cheers mate.